Please be seated. As we come together this morning, it's no secret that in life we go through times of trial. We go through times of pain, we go through times of suffering. We go through problems that just happen because of life. We go through those times, sometimes I feel that we, we feel like we're just stuck in deep mud. The more we try, the deeper we go, the harder the work, the more we get stuck. We're not the only ones that have felt like this. We're not the only people that have gone through times that we feel we need something. That, that maybe God's not hearing us. Maybe he's not listening to us. Maybe, maybe we're just not asking the right questions. There are other people that have gone through this. Today we're going to look at the prophet Jeremiah. And we're going to look at some verses from the book of Lamentations that talk about his time. His time that he went through this, the, the questions that he had, the problems and the trials in his life. And hopefully we look at these. We'll understand too where God is today for us. Through all times, through all problems, through all situations, the mud is never too deep. But God is always there to help lift us up. If you'd like to follow along, our scripture today comes from Lamentations chapter 3, starting in verse 19. And this is what is written. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will not wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Let us pray. Dear Father, we come to you this morning and pray that you would be with us and guide us. <clears throat> that you would open our hearts and our spirits to these words. That they would fill us. That you would help us to understand and apply them in our lives. We pray these things today in your name, Lord. Amen. So to understand where the scripture comes from, we have to understand where Jeremiah is in his life. Jeremiah, like many Israelites at this time, were raised in Jerusalem. The city had the temple. It was built by David. The temple was constructed by Solomon. Life was good. They understood God and God took care of them. But they had fallen short at a time in their lives as well. The city of Jerusalem was overtaken and destroyed. The Israelites pushed out. Jeremiah lived this. Jeremiah writes in his book of his loss, of a feeling that he's been abandoned, of a feeling that nothing makes sense anymore. The world has come crashing down around him, and he doesn't know which way is up. He doesn't know which way to turn. Sound familiar to anybody? Times of struggle. Times of great loss. Times of great questioning within the people. Where do we go? What do we do? We come to our God and we pray and things don't seem to get any better. We still have illness. We still have pain. We still have suffering. We still have loss. So what next? Jeremiah, throughout this book, writes of his trials, writes of his problems, writes of his pain, writes of his suffering. In verse 7 to 14, he says, He has walled me in so I cannot escape. He has weighed me down with chains. Even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has barred my way with blocks of stone, and he has made my paths crooked. I know there's been times in my life that I've felt just, what else? What can we do next? What's coming? But I can also tell you that on the other side of those, there's always been God's grace. Today, as we look around, just in our prayer concerns this morning, we know of people that suffer, we know of people that have pain. And we see an opportunity here to understand how we can talk to God. And Jeremiah is pretty upfront with them. God, I, I feel abandoned. I feel left out. I feel like there's nothing going right anywhere. I don't know what to do next. And 
one point in time of scripture, he says, like a bear lying in wait, like a lion hiding, he dragged me from the path and mangled me and left me without help. This isn't one of Jeremiah's more cheerier notes. As we look at the world around us today, as I thought about this scripture today, I thought, you know, there's a lot of people today that feel this way. There's a lot of people today that don't have jobs. There's a lot of people today that are looking for food. There's a lot of people today that are just really, really cold. There's a lot of people today in need. And I believe that at times we go through this, we forget to really go and really listen to God. As Jeremiah goes through this chapter in Lamentations, he lists all of these things, all of these problems, all of these ways he feels. And I believe that if we're honest with ourselves, we've all felt that way at some point in time. The what else could go wrong scenario? The where is God scenario? We've heard it in the news, we've seen it in the country. If you read the news today, it's pretty often now you'll see people saying, well, I don't know where God is in that church, it's not working out real well, or I don't know what God's doing there. Look how bad it is. Things couldn't be any worse. But I can tell you today that for the nation of Israel, things were pretty bad. And the people in the nation of Israel were saying to each other, I don't think this could get any worse. We just watched the city that David built, Solomon finished, get destroyed. We're homeless. We're wanderers again. God promised us a kingdom and poof, it's gone. But Jeremiah remains faithful in his life. Jeremiah continues to pray, continues to work, continues to live for God. And as we read through the book of Lamentations, we see Jeremiah saying, you know, I'm praying to you, but I'm getting beat up for it. I'm calling out to God, and people are calling me names. They're calling me weak. They're calling me dumb. They're calling me just foolish for praying to a God and let this happen. But the wisdom is in Jeremiah. For he never forgot God in his life. And friends, the challenge for us as we live our lives, as we go through times of trial and tribulation, as we go through times of pain and suffering, as we go through times of loss in our life, is to never forget God. When I was a teenager, you'll find this hard to believe, but I used to try the limits of everything that I had. I had a Dodge Power Wagon, 1977. It was burnt orange, red, and black. And I couldn't go anywhere that people didn't know where I was because that was my dad's truck for many years before me. He was very wise in giving me that truck in those colors. But I learned quickly on with my friends when we went out and we tried to see how far we could go in the mud that the worst thing to do was keep spinning our tires when we got stuck. The best thing to do was wait and see how many people took to pull us out. Friends, what we do when we get in trouble in life is we continue to spin our tires. When things go bad, when things go wrong, we continue to say, I don't know what else is going to go wrong. This is terrible. Today's awful. Maybe you know some people that are a little bit pessimistic in life. When something starts to go bad, they just look for the next worst thing. Well, our scripture today, if we continue on in the book of Jeremiah, in verse 55, he says this, I called on your name, Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ears to my cry for relief. You came near me when I called and you said, Do not fear. You, Lord, took up my case. You redeemed my life. Friends, when we're in those times of trial and tribulation, we need to remember like Jeremiah to call. It's okay to say, God, you heard my plea. Please don't close your ears to me. Please come. I need your help. And God responds, do not fear. What an awesome message from our God. What an awesome gift he gave us to be able to come to us in our times of need and say, my child, come with me. My child, stand up and walk. I've got you. In the times when we're stuck in that deep mud of life, see, I don't believe that God just pulls on us. I believe that God actually picks us up. And God carries us. And God sets us down on firm ground. Friends, our God is with us at all times. It is up to us to remember that and talk to Him. 
When we feel alone and lost, it is not because God has left us. It's because we have forgotten to go to God. So friends, today as we go from this place, I know there are trials and tribulations in each of our lives. I know we have friends and family that are struggling with pain and suffering, that have illness, that have losses, that have questions. Do not fear. For in God, through Jesus Christ, we have nothing in this world that can harm us. Maybe physically we can get worn down. Maybe we feel a little weak. But our spirits will rise above to the blood of Jesus Christ. So friends, today as we go from this place, go out with joy. No matter what the world looks like around us, it's pretty bad, I would assume, for Jeremiah to say, God, I feel like I'm in a pit. They're covering me up. I know we go through it. But know also, Jeremiah comes to us. You, Lord, took up my case. You, Lord, redeemed our lives. Friends, go from this place today knowing that there is no mud too deep. There is no cavern too far. There is no valley that God cannot find us in. As you go from here today, whether it's you or it's a friend or it's a neighbor, that needs to hear the word of God, go with them and share. God's grace is greater than anything in this world. God's grace pulls us out of any situation we find ourselves stuck in. Let us pray. Dear Father, we come to you today and we pray that you would be with us and guide us, that you would lift us up in your hands, that Father, no matter how deep the mud is that we're stuck in, that you would carry us above it and through it. Father, today we pray that you'll be with us and guide us, lift us in your great hands, and share with us your amazing grace. Father, we thank you for all we've been given. In your name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand and join us singing hymn number 349, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues. Mm -hmm. 